Just as tens of thousands of Canadians are getting ready to head to the airports for Christmas, the federal government is bringing in new regulations to compensate passengers for the worst things about flying, cancellations and delays in lost luggage. The long-promised Passenger Bill of Rights includes compensation of up to $2,400 for a cancelled flight, $1,000 for a long delay, and up to $2,100 for lost or damaged baggage. And the government is hoping to bring these changes in by next summer. But wait, the man who played the largest role in bringing about these changes Passenger rights activist Gabor Lukics is not impressed. He says the government is pulling the wool over the eyes of the traveling public. The man who's been described as the national antagonist of aviation is here with us tonight. It's good to be to come. Good evening. You've been waiting a long time for this and you're not happy. What's wrong with what the government's going to do? The government is taking away some of our rights and re gifting our existing rights to us. For example, with respect to baggage that you mentioned, 2100 Canadian dollars has been on the law books for a long time, for over 15 years. What is new there? I could re to your car and your watch and your house. Mm -hmm. Am I going to help you with it? Of course not. Well, I think the government, not to defend the government, but, but, but is a regulation not better than a corporate policy, which is I really what we've had? Policy. There's been a federal law called the Carriage by Air Act mm -hmm. incorporating the Montreal Convention, which contains a $2,100 uh, liability limit for airlines for baggage. Uniform, it has been the law for 15 years. With respect to other matters, the most troubling aspect is probably stranding people for longer in the aircraft on the tarmac, doubling the amount of time passengers can be kept in the tarmac from 90 minutes to three hours or longer. Mm -hmm. It can be a serious concern for passengers with disabilities, for families with children, and especially for people with diabetes. I suspect, uh, Mr. Lukacs, that there are people watching us who've been stranded on tarmacs for a long period of time and never received any offer of compensation. Is this not better than that? Mm -hmm. We're talking about simply at what point the airline has to actually bring you back to the gate and allow right. you to disembark. This one would cost airlines no direct money. They wouldn't have to hand you over anything. Mm -hmm. But I think that keeping passengers for more than 90 minutes on the tarmac is inhumane. And that's also what the Senate said. This was a highly controversial matter. Mm -hmm. The Senate told Minister Garneau he needs to put it back the 90 minutes. And Mr. Garneau chose not to listen. What about the idea of compensating people who get bumped, compensating them in a meaningful way compared with what they're doing now? Is this better than what we have in, in practice now? The trouble with what we see now is that even for bumping, the airline will be able to tell you that they pay you nothing because they just swap the aircraft and that was done for maintenance reasons. Mechanical or safety. Mechanical safety and then you get nothing. So it's not simply a loophole but rather a gaping big hole in the scheme unheard of internationally. It's mm -hmm. against international standards and is substantially inferior to the European standards. In Europe, if you're bumped, you're owed compensation, no questions. And if your flight is delayed or cancelled, then the airline has to pay even if it was because the aircraft broke down. The only exception would be something like a snowstorm, a volcano eruption, act of terrorism, God forbid, but nothing like the normal day-to-day -day operation of the airline, which includes fixing an aircraft. So do you see the airlines hiding behind safety and mechanical reasons as an excuse not to pay compensation? Is that what's going to happen? Absolutely. We have already seen airlines hiding behind the weather, mm. which in and on its own, weather is a good reason not to pay compensation, but airlines have already been abusing that. Now we add the other major cause for uh, delays and cancellations, which is uh, maintenance, and what is left? Passengers are left with no scenario when they will get a dime. What if, in, if anything, in these regulations is an improvement? Is there anything that's any better? Um, the debate that has been taking place, it makes passengers more aware of their rights and rights for musicians about their musical instruments. Those are truly novel. Uh, for small people, it's a big problem, and I must create the government for that. Mm -hmm. But the other items are mostly clawing back our rights or re-gifting rights that we already have. We're hearing that these changes could cost up to $3 per passenger. Do you buy that? Is it, is it going to cost us more to do what, what's being proposed here? I'm not buying it whatsoever. Uh, the airlines won't be paying compensation in most of those cases. Many of those rights already exist. Under the Montreal Convention, mm -hmm. part of the Canadian federal law book, airlines are already liable up to $8,600 per passenger for international travel. We didn't see that cause any kind of major increase. It has been in the law books for 15 years. And in Europe, where they have a much better, much superior passenger protection regime, actually the airfares are substantially lower 
and more competitive for airlines than Canada. So when you look at what's being proposed today, Mr. Lukacs, is this all likely to result in fewer delays, fewer passengers being bumped, or more compensation being paid, or neither or both? I would say neither. I think it's going to just make things worse for Canadians, more difficult for them to get compensation when things go wrong, because airlines will be pointing at those regulations as an excuse. There's also the enforcement piece. Who's going to be there to enforce these regulations? And the Canadian Transportation Agency, the federal watchdog, has a dismal enforcement record. Mm -hmm. They have uh, been taking no action on misleading passengers in the past five years, not a single time that they should have fined. They could fine an airline in each and every inf infraction up to $25,000. Amount of fine issued, zero. So at the end of all of this, we better off or worse off than, than, than we are now? I would, say we, I would say we are worse off. Worse off. And I would say that, that, that we should be going back to the drawing table, fixing our legislation to match the European regime, which is the gold standard, mm -hmm. and then fix the regulations to match that. Unfortunately, Minister Garneau does not want to listen to the public, did not listen to the Senate, so we are not holding our breath about this. Passenger rights advocate Gabor Lukacs, math professor by day, well, maybe he's passenger rights advocate by day, math professor by night. It's good of you to come. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Back with more here in just a moment on CTV News.